Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick. Today's video is all about the A1 Mini. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of first time 3D printing hobbyists here, so I want to make sure that this video is easy to follow. I recently picked up both the A1C and the A1C Mini, and I quickly learned that there are a lot of mods for both. If you don't know what the C means in the A1, that simply just means that I have an AMS light. Just last week, I released my A1 must-have prints, so of course I had to make one for the Mini as well. Today we're going to be upgrading the A1 Mini's space saving, compatibility, and stability. This video is going to be a little more in depth than the A1, so grab a cold one and let's jump right in. First off, I'd like to talk about the space use for the A1 Mini. Even with such a small footprint, I still needed to mount the AMS light overhead to save space. All my 3D printers are literally feet away from my office desk, so my space is very limited. So the first mod that I'm going to be talking about is the AMS top mount. This mod is going to move your AMS light off of the table and on top of your A1 Mini. Now this mod is nowhere near as complex as the A1 version, but honestly, I'm liking it. There are actually two versions that are identical, but one is 10mm shorter. I decided to go with the shorter version. But hold on, we're not going to just stop there. I'm actually going to be showing you guys a second top mount mod that positions the AMS vertically. And that one's called the A1 Mini AMS Light Rotating Top Mount Vertical Stand. I decided to give you guys a thorough comparison of both mounts as they're very similar and heck, why not? Isn't that what this channel's for anyways? If I can save you some time of having to print and test both, then this video is gonna be a win-win. First, let's talk about the shorter top mount riser. Like I mentioned before, I really like the simple design and how it angled the AMS over the top of the A1 Mini. Insulation is super easy, simply remove the top cap and replace it with the mount. You can even see that I already had it installed when I was doing the unboxing and assembling of the A1 Mini. I've now had some time to give it a test drive. After assembling the A1 and getting it set up for calibration, I noticed that there could be a possible issue with this design. The way it mounts, it puts quite a bit of stress on the number 4 AMS slot. There wasn't much play no matter how I positioned the PTFE tube. I had a feeling that this is why there was a shorter version that was created. I honestly think it would be a hard task to even get the number 4 PTFE tube connected with a taller top mount version. After about a week of use, what I suspected could happen did. The number 4 was pulled down so hard that it actually jammed the connector in the AMS. I had to actually use pliers to push the orange clip back down into the AMS housing to fix it. I really think that this mod has some great potential and I'm sure there are some of you that may not have experienced this, but this was enough for me to take a look at a second option. And that's going to be the top mount vertical stand. Once I found this mod and saw how it positions the AMS, I knew I wouldn't run into the same problem. There's also this really cool handle mod that I printed with the mod as well. The insulation is quite similar to the other mod, just unscrew the top cap, remove it, and install the stubby mount. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, there is a small little wedge adapter that you can print that gives the mod a little bit more stability. So I definitely suggest printing that. Oh, and don't worry, all the mod links will be included in the description below. Once you install the top mount, just take the wedge and slide it with the holder over the mount. Next, slide in your AMS and connect the PTFE tubes. I also had this extra tube holder clip, so I used that to give the tubes a little more organization. I really like how this top mount works, and as you can see, it now sits pretty much at the same height as my A1 top mount. You can also rotate the AMS as well if you need to. While I really would have liked the first mod to work, I really think it needs some additional attention to the design. I hope that the short comparison can save you some time when trying to decide on which top mount to use. Oh, and by the way, these aren't the only two AMS top mount mods for the A1 Mini. Let's go ahead and move on. To complement the top mount, my next mount was going to be the Z-axis stiffener bracket. It actually comes from another top mount mod, but can be printed separately, so that's exactly what I did. When we added more weight over the top of the A1 Mini, I thought that this mod would be a perfect fit to add additional sturdiness. But before you print this mod, I would actually like to talk about the next mod, which is the drag chain mod. I really liked having the drag chain mod as it gave it a nice finished look, but both the stiffener and the drag chain mod mounted in the exact same place. So I decided to combine both mods so that they're compatible with each other. You can find the modified bracket in the description below. Here's what it looks like with both mods installed with a modified bracket. Installing the stiffener bracket is quite simple. Just install the bracket and screw it into the stiffener, and that's it. The drag chain mod is slightly more work. You first have to remove the front cap of the A1 Mini and install the printed plate mod. Then connect all the chain parts together and then onto the bracket and the front plate. Next, slide the power cable into the chain and use the little clips to hold it in place and you're done. Moving on to the next mod, I printed these spool adapters. Now these are pretty universal with quite a bit of different filaments, but if not, I suggest doing a quick search for a spool adapter and add the filament name. There are dozens of these that fit all types of different filaments. Nothing else to really talk about, just print, slip, and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and talk about poop. By now, I'm sure you know what filament poop is. 
For my A1 Mini, I decided I didn't want a huge poop bucket sitting on the side of the printer. So I went with this A1 Mini bamboo poop box. This is definitely an opinion print and there are hundreds of options. I like the simplicity of this one. If you decide to go with a desk poop bucket, then I suggest printing this poop deflector. It will keep some of these random flying poops from missing the bucket. I do have a suggestion though. If you plan on doing a lot of multicolor printing, go with a large poop bucket. This compact poop bucket will fill up quite quickly. For me, I have a lot of prints that are over 15 hours, so I'm not worried about having to empty it very often. This may change in the future, so I may print something larger, but that's the beauty of 3D printing, right? Next, I would like to talk about two tools that are a must print. First is the PTFE tube removal tool. This will save your fingers. I tried removing the tubes without using this tool and I should have just printed it. It makes it much easier to remove the tubes when needed and your fingers will thank you. For our maintenance tool, I choose the A1 Mini Toolkit Lube Clean. Similar to the A1 tool that I printed, this A1 Mini tool gives us the ability to lube up your Y-axis rails as well as the X linear rails. This tool is a must print. While we're talking about tools, let's go ahead and talk about toolboxes. And I must say, these things are just awesome. I've already printed the P1S version of this toolbox and they are great, sturdy, and hold all the tools needed to work on your bamboos. I'm actually going to include two different versions as one is much more basic but requires no additional hardware screws to build. I honestly really like them and that's why I printed both. I plan to fill up both of these with additional hot ends and maintenance replacements. Here's some footage of both toolboxes. When ordering any of the bamboo printer combos, you'll get shipped a sample box that looks just like this. Rather than just having them sit inside a box that you'll never look at, why not print a swatch box? There are three different versions that can be printed. I end up printing the small and the medium, which was plenty of space for organizing these. Ever since I purchased my first combo, I had them sitting in a cardboard box. Now. I have a quick way to sample out colors for my next filament haul. Now lastly, I would like to talk about upgrading the A1 remote viewing. I have a few of these Tapo C111 cameras and I would like to use them for viewing my prints on my P1s and my A1s. They are only $16 right now on Amazon. They have great 2K video quality and the footage is super clean. I tend to do a lot of printing while I'm sleeping or gone, so lighting has been a battle with the A1 Mini. This camera has really good low light recording and works great even in the dark. I would definitely recommend these cameras as an upgrade to your A1 Mini. Also with the Tapo app, you can access your camera super quick if you want to check on your prints remotely. I know that sometimes you can have some issues with viewing the live footage from your handy app. I will include a link to the camera and the mod in the description below. All right, and that's going to conclude my list of A1 Minis must prints. There are always new mods being released, so I'll most likely do a follow-up video down the road. If there is a mod that you feel should be in this list, then please leave a comment below and tell me. If you like this video, please check out some of my other 3D printing education suggestions on the screen. I pour a ton of time into each and every video release so that you can get the most out of every view. Again, my name is Nick. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.